Hello, my name is Chris Lee, and today I'm going to walk you through the process of estimating a commercial electrical project, starting with uploading plans, performing an on-screen takeoff, and building a customer-facing quote. We'll get started on the estimating dashboard, where you can see all your current projects in the various stages of the estimating and operational life cycle. We have a project set up that we can access by clicking the name, which takes us to the project details page where we'll enter the project name, description, due date, and the customer details. We can also create project-specific notes and tasks so we don't forget any details later on. Now let's upload some plans by clicking the Plans tab from the navigation bar and then click Add Plans. Click Select Files to upload and browse to the file location. Double-click the file, which can be either a PDF or image file format, to begin the upload process. Depending on the size of the file, this could take anywhere from a few seconds to a few minutes to complete. You can now see a new folder containing the plans that can be renamed or expanded to view the individual sheets within the plan set. You can rename the sheets manually or automatically by clicking the Auto Rename button and selecting the name of the plan from the bottom right hand corner, assuming the name is in the same place on all the sheets, it'll rename all the sheets automatically. We can now delete, rotate, or organize our sheets into individual folders to streamline the takeoff process. Now let's click takeoff on the navigation bar to begin the process of counting light fixtures, receptacles, and measuring out our conduit runs on the plans we've uploaded and renamed in the previous step. Before we start our takeoff, let's cover some of the basic mouse functions for navigating around the plan. To pan, click and hold with your mouse and move the plan around to a desired location. And you can use your mouse wheel to zoom in and out. At the top of the plan, you can navigate between sheets using the drop-down list to select the desired plan by name. Before we begin our takeoff, we'll want to set a plan scale using one of our common architectural or civil scales, or by manually setting the scale using a known distance, such as a three-foot doorway. In our example today, we'll use one quarter inch equals a foot that is depicted on the drawing. Now that we've set our scale, let's add a few takeoffs for this project by clicking Add New Takeoff. This brings up a searchable dialog box that we can use to query our out-of-the-box database, your very own custom database, or you can simply type in the name of a part that does not already exist in the database to begin your takeoff. And then you'll adjust the labor and the material for this item later on in the estimating step. In our example, we want to add multiple assemblies from the out-of-the-box database to begin our lighting takeoff. So we'll click Catalog, and start by searching for a 2x4 and 2x2 LED trofer. Now as the results come up, you'll click the plus sign next to the item and then type in the next item that you want to search for. Okay, let's find a commercial grade occupancy sensor, a single pole switch, three quarter inch overhead branch with three number 12s, and lastly, a standard J-Box. Once you've chosen all your desired items, click Select, and now we'll want to adjust the takeoff type, symbol, and color for each of the selected items that will be used to identify the item on our takeoff. Now click Add to Plan, and this puts you into takeoff mode with the item on top selected by default. You can tell which item is in takeoff mode because it's highlighted with a blue circle and you'll notice your cursor has changed to a crosshair and you are now ready to begin your counts. You can toggle in between takeoff and edit mode by clicking the takeoff name and then to transition to another item, simply click the item name. Let's go ahead and start the takeoff process by taking off some 2x4 LED fixtures labeled on the plan is A1D. Now you can go through and manually count one by one by hovering your mouse over the item and clicking, but in this example we're going to use the auto count function to speed up the process. To begin the auto count process, click the auto count icon using your mouse, 
and select the area around the A1D symbol. You can use the handles to resize the selection, or if everything looks good, click the check mark. A dialog box will appear that gives you the option to search all plans, the active plan, or manually selected plans from your list. In this example, we want to search the active plan, so we'll leave it selected and click Run Auto Count to begin the process. With the Auto Count feature, you can easily count hundreds or thousands of symbols from multiple plan sheets in a matter of seconds. The results will be returned in the dialog box with likely matches selected. To remove false positives or negatives, simply click the symbol to add or remove any unwanted symbols from your counts, and then click Save and Close. Even though we auto counted the A1Ds, you can still manually add or remove symbols. So for this example, we'll manually count the A2Ds because there's a relatively small quantity. And then we'll auto count the occupancy sensors using the same process as before. As you can see with these items, there are far less false positives to remove. And now let's count the one pull switches depicted on the drawing. Review our selection and then click Save and Close. Now that we've counted devices on the drawing, let's add some items that are not depicted visually on the drawing. In this example, I'm going to place a standard J-Box assembly between each of the pairs of light fixtures, assuming we can reach the J-Box with our fixture width. Let's go ahead and start our overhead branch measurements. Single click at your starting point and drag your mouse across the screen using single mouse clicks to turn, and you can keep the lines level by holding the shift key while measuring. Now if you overshoot a turn, simply hit the backspace key or delete to remove one segment at a time from the active takeoff. To end this measurement, double click, and you'll notice you're still in active takeoff mode and can begin another measurement. Let's finish the rest of our overhead branch measurements. So click on the screen at your starting point and double click to end the measurement. And then move to your next starting point, drag the line, and then double click to end. Now let's add the additional J boxes required to finish the runs. Again, to transition to a different material item, just click the takeoff name and begin those counts by single clicking where the J box will be placed on the plan. Okay, so now that we have our lighting takeoff completed, let's use the groups feature to break the project up between lighting and lighting branch. We can do this by clicking on the takeoff name and dragging upwards until you see the new group button appear. Drop the takeoff there and it'll create a new group. Now we can drag the other lighting branch items into the new group and then rename both the groups by clicking the name and typing in the new name. Creating groups is very helpful for many reasons. One of which is that it gives you the ability to see your labor and material broken out by phase. But it also allows you to create a bill of material with just the light fixtures included for quoting purposes. Let's go ahead and move to the estimating section to review our quantities, material pricing, and labor rates. Here you can see our estimate broken out by the grouping we set up earlier with parts and assemblies displayed with quantities, material cost, total cost extended, labor, and total labor extended out in man hours. We can edit the numbers in blue, and in this example, we'll want to increase our three quarter inch overhead branch to 200 feet to account for waste and to hit our purchase minimums. On some of the items, you'll notice a blue arrow, which signifies the item is a multi-layered assembly. If you click on the arrow, you can see the subcomponents of the assembly with the material and labor broken out in the appropriate ratios. To add materials or additional items, click Add Part. In this example, we want to include some project management time for training, creating as builds, and project handoff. We'll want to move it to a new group, so let's create a new category called Project Management. We'll then click and drag the Project Management task down to the new group Project Management. Let's move down to the Additional Notes section and review a couple inclusions and exclusions that we added in some project-specific notes. You can save your inclusions and exclusions from project to project and update on an as-needed basis. The details here will appear on your customer-facing quote 
and are especially important if you choose to create lump sum bids as most electrical contractors are doing today. Below the notes section, we have our summary section where we can enter our composite fully burdened labor cost, which in this case is $49.50 per hour. Here you can see the total labor hours for the project and when multiplied by the labor cost per hour, gives us our total labor cost. Below that, you can see our total material cost and in red, the total estimated project cost. To the right, we can adjust our profit margin and below, we have some additional adjustments that we can make, which include overhead, lost time, waste, and sales tax. At this point, we have our sales price, which is depicted here, and we can click show bid to review our customer facing quote. This includes your logo, contact and customer details. And as you scroll down all the inclusions and exclusions that you entered earlier in the project notes section. At the bottom, we have the project totals and taxes broken out with a signature line. And you have a few options for breaking the quote out in more or less detail, depending on your company preference. Click export bid to download a PDF version that you can forward along to your customer for approval.